Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. So let's begin today with our sacrum chakra in the week of the month, in the month of Taurus. Topic for today is matter. So let's go to the meaning of matter. So the meaning of matter. Matter in English comes from mater in Indo-European language that means mother, mom. Hmm? Forgot to write it here. Mother, hmm? which gives the word matris, meaning womb, which in Latin is called matrix. So let's talk about this topic that most of us, from the spiritual point of view, um, live really behind because we are attached to beliefs or spiritual beliefs from religion's point of view. So first question is, what is matter? So in order to understand matter, let's go to the most logic point of view of matter so we can understand what it is. The reality we have, uh, sacred trinity do you remember which is the sacred trinity so i'm talking about the holy trinity of the reality not the holy trinity of the concepts or religion or attributes or culture no it's just the reality so that sacred Trinity, that holy trinity, is called vibration, energy, and matter. So we can say here that vibration creates energy, but also energy generates vibration, and both of them manifest what we call matter. Hmm? From this one, we have many other holy trinities that we will call here spirit, in the conceptual trinity will be spirit, will be soul here, and will be the body. Spirit, soul, and body. The conceptual trinity, so, is spirit, soul, and body. The trinity of attributes are called wisdom, love and will the trinity of an atom electron proton neutron the holy trinity of culture is called sound light and form Mm -hmm. So, when we talk about the Holy Trinity, we are not talking about the one of religion. We are talking about the one that represents the best of all realities, which is this one. Vibration, energy, and matter. So, get this idea. For In order to exist a Trinity, they need the three parts. If I take one of them, the Trinity disappears. So we need the three of them all together. It's not that first is vibration and then creates the energy and then the matter creates the matter and then the energy creates the matter and so on. No, we need the three of them, the three of them 
all the time. In order to exist a being, we need the three of them at the same time. This is important. So important to understand this trinity as one because we usually think about them as if they are separate. We think about the vibration, like vibration is something, the energy is something different, and matter is something different. So because if these things are different from our point of view, we believe that the spirit, the soul, and the body are three different things, that each of them are going around in different places. And it's not like that. So what is vibration? Vibration is a wave. It's a wave that moves through different frequencies. Frequencies. What is frequencies? Is the amount of time that each one of the waves need to repeat itself. So a wave can also behave as a particle. So we can imagine that in this wave, we have a particle that is moving in different frequencies. This particle here moves in the shape of a wave like this. And as faster it moves, meaning as higher frequency it has, it creates what we call energy. Energy is the movement of a particle on the wave of a vibration, like the light that moves in waves through space. So we have here that this vibration generates an energy according into how this vibration moves. Lo cual genera un efecto que hace que la energía se ordene de forma polar, haciendo que un electrón que es negativo y un protón que es positivo se unan a través de una onda de acción, lo cual va a ir generando un átomo que es la base de la materia. So here the energy, which is this movement, the constant movement of the vibration, will have different levels of vibration according to the frequencies. Low frequency, high frequency, the time in which repeats the wave. And that creates different kinds of energy. So here we have how the energy is manifested according to the frequencies of our, of our vibration. Also, in the other hand, we have that a vibration has a positive and a negative, positive and negative, positive and negative. So this means that this vibration is creating polarity. And polarity attracts to one another because negative needs the positive to keep going to keep going. Hmm? That makes the energy organize itself in polarity as the complement from positive to negative, positive to negative, which makes that some of these waves make themselves as a negative particle and some of them as a positive particle, which we call electron and proton. From a wave, they become particles that creates an atom which is the base of matter. Can you see now how they are connected as only one thing? That they are not three different things? That the only three different things are just concepts that helps us to understand the parts of it? Okay. 
So as you see here, all this is only one thing. And it works for the entire universe. It's not different from each level. For example, for us in the third dimension, this structure is really low. So it, this means that these particles are really close to one another, very dense. But the same structure is the one creating a beam in the seventh dimension. How? Because these two, they don't behave as particles, they behave as waves. And they are very apart from one another. So the, the same thing creates something in the seventh dimension is the same thing that creates something in the third dimension, but just organized in a different way. We can say now that in every dimension, matter exists, but we live it in a different way. We experience matter in a different way. From our point of view, is matter, is this density. But from the point of view of a seventh dimension can be just the divine mother. Or from another point of view, it can be the matrix or the network. So it's everywhere. It's just a different way of organization. And this is something important to transcend the religiosity that we have regarding regarding the spirit, the soul, and the body. Let's change the names of this. So check this. We have changed only the, the, the words, but the things are the same. So here, if you see this, you can say that the spirit gives place to the possibility of manifest the soul. And the soul, in its different states of vibration, can give birth to the reality of the body. I will repeat what I said once. Gas state, liquid state, solid. Gas, liquid, solid. All of this is water. They are only different states of the same being. So now the question is why sometimes we disconnect the body or the soul from the state of the body? If they are the same thing, why separate them? So um, in order to get this idea of why we separate from each one of the aspects, we have to remember that the universe is mind. Universe is mind, divided in three aspects, the subconscious, the unconscious, and the conscious. But it's all about concepts. So when I am conscious, I am aware of all this. When I am unconscious, I am aware of only two of them. And when I live through the subconscious, I only relate to the body. So imagine that a person that lives through the body, only through the body, they cannot perceive the other two states of the being. It's very difficult for those people to perceive the soul and the spirit. So they live only through the subconscious in this body, willing to survive. This is like the ice, like the ice in the center of the Antarctica. Ice in the center of Antarctica, it's been millions of years, thousands or centuries that have no idea how it is to be liquid 
or gas. So they have been, so they know only to be eyes, the body. So for God, how it is to be connected in other two states. This is the same thing that happens to a lot of people. So basically what happened with us is like, because we are so used to be a body, for God, how it is to be the other two states. So that's why within, we have this kind of idea that we can be those other two states, but we have no idea how, because it's been so long without being that. that. So this, this is why we kind of create the idea that there are these two other states apart from me, somewhere else. And we position, we, we say, if I am ice, I know that there is water. I, I don't see the water. I can't see the water. But I know it's in the ocean. Or I can't see the gas, but I know it's in the air. So what we do with this is like... Um, Like I know that these other two parts of me exist out there, but they are separate from me. And I don't realize, don't realize that they are water too, that I am also water, that they are part of me. Hmm? This is the problem that we usually have as humanity, that we believe that we have to connect with these other two parts, that we have to look for them. But they are already here. The eyes has just to remember that it's work. It doesn't have to move forward to look for the soul and the spirit. It just has to remember. So it's not about... Um, it's not about to reconnect with them. It's about to remember what am I. And how can we remember all this? Which is not easy. So what we do during the what we usually do is to see the reality as separate things. So we see this like that, and we say, oh, these are three parts that I have to connect. So I have to take a path to find this one. I have to take a path to find this one. And then I have to take a path to reconnect all of them with myself. This is an initiatic path, for example. So why do we take this path? Because we usually consider that this one here is me, which is the matter and the body. Because humanity used to feel themselves separated from one another. We used to believe that we are one of these dots that have to take a path to look for the other parts in order to recognize myself. But in reality, I am not this. This path here is what I know as the path of knowledge. The path of knowledge is the path that you take to know the different parts of yourself. And in the other hand, we have the path of wisdom. So the path of wisdom is the opposite to the path of knowledge, because the path of knowledge is trying to find 
the whole in all the parts. And wisdom is the one that is. In order to find the truth, what I have to do is to set myself free from the from the parts and walk the path of void of the nothingness. Because the thing that connected all the parts is a triangle in the middle, the void. So the wise says, this body is not me. This soul is not me. This spirit is not me. So, if none of this it's me, so what am I? The answer is simple. I am. Hmm? And from the void, I can do this. Is the moment in which I transcend the form and I recognize that I am much more. And I am so much that I am able to create many more. So I expand even more and more in different levels of consciousness. Hmm? This takes us to understand that what we before knew as spirit, as a soul, as a body, they are just dots in a big network that we call matrix a matrix that is able to express and manifest in all the levels of consciousness this is why when we reach the void it's not that we are now in nothing when we reach the void we got out of the shapes of the forms in order to be able to see the whole, everything. So the path of the wisdom is the one that allows the being to see the spirit in the garbage, to see the soul in the most darkest person, to see the body in the constellations and the space. So this is to acknowledge that whoever see that can perceive that it is every reality in every option. This takes us to understand that in order to be spiritual, we don't need to be flying in the stars. It's also to understand that to be a material person, it doesn't take you away from spirituality. And that the best way in which we have in this reality to connect to the spiritual is through the matter. Matter is the manifestation of the divine dream. We have a very misunderstood concept of what is matter. We say that matter is something dense. We say that matter or the people that live through matter are materialistic. We put a very negative connotation in matter. When matter is really actually the direct 
manifestation expression of our spirit. So it's not matter the problem that we have. It's the idea that we have of separation of things. That we are parts separated that makes us believe that matter is not good. This takes us to the idea, the preconcept that some people has that used to say, if money would exist, we wouldn't have all these problems in humanity. No, it's not like that. Because the problem is not the money. The problem is the concept we have about the money, the concept that we have upon matter. Because if it is not money, it would be corn or water or stone, whatever. Is the concept that we have of matter that takes us to have a, a use of matter in a certain way. This is why the problem is not the matter, it's our incapacity to see that everything is one. And it's important for us to understand this concept of what is matter, because we are not in this path to ascend, to enlighten, into a very light dimension. What we are doing here is to understand the matter so we can work with the matter properly. Hmm? What I would recommend for you is to practice to see the beauty in all the things that exist, in the tiny things of the universe, of the reality of your daily life, to see the beauty on that, and also in the most horrible and dark things, which is the most difficult one. And just to wrap this idea, it's important to understand that to see the beauty in the bad and horrible things, to accept them unconditionally, is not to stay still and not do anything. To see the beauty in the horrible things helps us to know what is the key in order to make it transform into some, something new and better? Because if we only see the bad part of things, the horrible part of things, they will never transform. We would never have the opportunity to transform them. That's why we keep in this system of polarity. But if we work on ourselves in order to see the beauty in the most horrible things, we can take those horrible things and made it, make it into something better and good. And there is no but for this. It doesn't exist bad people in the world. There are not bad people in the world. There are only people that had no idea how to manage their needs. There are people that are in disharmony, but they are not bad people. They are disharmonized. Hmm? So there is no bad here. There is no exception. We are all childs, children of the mother.
The vibration for today is Vu. The statement is, I am the origin of the matrix.